The dividing head is a really useful accessory for a milling machine. Its task, as its name suggests, is to divide 360 degrees into virtually any angle that you might need to machine for a given project. Understanding your dividing head is vital to get the full usage out of your mill. So let's have a look at some of the basic functions of a dividing head. Looking at the top, we can see just in front of the lifting eye, which by the way is really important because these things are extremely heavy, the locking pin locates into 36 holes at 10 degree increments, which is located directly behind the chuck. On the side, we have the indexing plate with multiple holes drilled at regular spacings, each ring carrying a different number of holes as you work your way out to the outside of the plate. And here we can see a selection of indexing plates that are commercially available, covering a whole range of different hole numbers. Um, one plate having 15 through to 20 holes, um, the one on the left having the highest number 37 through to 49 holes. There are many, many options for plates available which will allow you to produce the angles that you need for your particular project. There are selector arms mounted above the plate. Now these selector arms are independently movable. Think of them like the hands on a clock. You can set them to the individual positions so you can mark out the different hole numbers that you need. Once locked together, they can then be rotated around the central spindle in order for you to keep count of the movements that you're making to produce the angle that is required for your particular project. Above the selector arm we have the crank assembly which has the handles that enable you to rotate the shaft and get the chuck to move. The lock pin here shown retracted to clear the plate locks into the holes machined into the indexing plate and the lock pin crank assembly can be slid radially to locate on the correct ring of holes on the indexing plate. So that's the basic controls. Let's get set up and actually do some machining. So we want to machine a square into this piece of round brass bar. Now we need to work out how to do the next three cuts. Most dividing heads have a ratio of 40 to 1, meaning that you need to turn the crank handle 40 times in order to get one complete revolution of the chuck. As we're making a square, we know each face needs to be at 90 degrees. So 360 divided by 90 gives us 4. If we then take our four sides and divide them into the ratio of 40 to 1, 4 over 40 gives us 10. So what that tells us is we need to make 10 full rotations of the handle to give us 90 degrees movement on the chuck. Here we can see that laid out on paper. 90 into 360 gives us 4, the four sides of the square. 40 to 1 ratio, so the four sides into 40 gives us 10 full turns of the handle to equal our desired 90 degrees. Always worth just sketching it out on paper just to do a sanity check. So we release the pin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Put the pin back in its original hole and the chuck is locked in position and we're ready now to make our second cut. Now we've taken all the guards off the machine here to get access for the filming. Um, and you might also notice that we are climb milling here. Uh, this gives us a better angle to get the filming done. That said, this is a nice heavyweight machine with a, with a nice heavy dividing head well clamped down to the table. So this will have no problems in doing a uh, climb milling operation here. And it'll give us the advantage that we won't have any burrs on the finished piece once it's done. So make sure you run your cutter right the way through. Make sure it's gone right through to the other side and stops cutting before you reverse it. And then work your cutter well back clear, making sure that it's not going to catch when you actually start to do your next rotation to cut the next face. And a quick eyeball check as, as the cutter moves out of the way tells us that looks nice and perpendicular. Looks at a pretty precise 90 degree angle, which means we should be ready to move on and do the next one. So we'll get the cutter well clear, take the pin out. Take the locking pin off as well and then count our turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Pin back into its original position, locking pin back in place, and start the cutter going. 
really, really important that you avoid distractions whilst you're carrying out these operations. It's very easy to lose track of how many turns you've done. Um, it's very easy to lose track of your original position for the pin to go into, so that's worth putting a little mark on there. So you're always going to return to exactly the correct place to get full, complete accuracy when you're performing these kind of angled cuts. I've sped this through. We don't want to see it going backwards, so we've done the third cut. We're going to finish off with the fourth cut now. So another 10 turns on the handle. Back into its locking position, lock it down securely, and we can run through the final cut. Machine runs through there quite nicely. It's taking quite a heavy cut on the brass. No coolants required. Nice brass self-lubricating is ideal for this kind of application. Run it right through to the end, and we should have completed our square. Burst the cutter out of the way and we're done. Some people will, as a sanity check, now do another 10 rotations of the handle to bring us back to our original position um, and see if the cutter is coming in and taking any more material off, which it shouldn't. It should now be back to a perfect zero and no more material will be moved. So that's our first dividing head cut. Produced a nice accurate square. The dividing head can be tilted so at the moment we've got it um, working in a horizontal position but it can actually be undone and rotated round so that it works in a vertical position which would allow us to produce for example multiple holes on a plate if we needed to make a replacement indexing plate for the dividing head itself it's a very versatile useful piece of equipment that's very well worth getting to know so a square is probably the easiest option we can produce on a dividing head, let's look at a more complicated version. In this example we're looking at making a hex, for example the head of a bolt. Six sides, 60 degrees per side, in our 40 to 1 ratio head. So 6 goes into 46.66 recurring, which gives us 6 and 2 third turns on the handle to produce our 60 degree sides. Here's a much more complicated example. We've got to produce 24 sides to a shape, or more realistically, we've got to produce 24 teeth on a gear. We're still using the 40 to 1 ratio, and we've got 24 teeth to cut. As you can see from the formula, the 40 over 24, or 8 over 3, gives us a total of 2 and 2 third turns. Now that means we're going to have to accurately divide the indexing plate into two-thirds of a turn in order to produce the 24 teeth that we need for this particular project. How can we do that accurately? So we need to find an indexing plate where the number of holes can be wholly divided by the denominator that we have here, a 3. So in this example, a 15-hole plate will work perfectly. Two-thirds of our 15-hole plate will give us 10. 10 holes, which means we need to count and move two full turns of the handle plus a further 10 holes in order to produce the angle that is required for the number of teeth. Now it's going to be easy to lose track so we need to find a way to make sure we don't get lost. So here I've drawn a really simple 15 hole indexing plate. We've got our pin positioned at the 12 o'clock hole. As you can see it's labelled in red. We then loosened our sector arms and then positioned them, as we can see here, so that there are 11 holes between the two arms of the sector arms. Why 11? Because we need one hole for the pin to actually go to. That's our origin point. So from the origin point, we will have 10 holes to count until we reach the other sector arm, which will give us the exact angle that we need to produce our 24 teeth. Once it's all positioned, make sure you lock the two sector arms so they cannot move independently of each other. And then we are ready to start the milling operation. As we count through, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Pop our pin into the tenth hole. Then we can rotate the entire selector arm around without the two arms moving relative to each other. 
which has given us a new origin point so that we can now do our two full turns followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes to give us the next tooth in our 24 tooth pattern. That's the basic operation of a dividing head. Thanks for watching.